Ice mummies are some of the best fossil adjacent things to find. They preserve so much of the original animal that they can help us to get an intimate idea of how these ancient animals looked and acted. They also contain delectable frozen bits of damaged DNA, helpful for genetics, conservation, and possibly resurrection. This time, I want to take a closer look at the handful of mummies that have been found over the years of cave lion cubs. Hey, while I have your attention, I have two other channels you should check out when you get a chance. Edge of Reality is where I talk about cryptids and the paranormal, anything that is creepy, crawly, and outside of the realm of science. Edge's World of Monsters is where I tackle basically anything fictitious, whether that be kaiju or dragons. The Cave Lion, so named due to the presence of many specimens in caves, but not necessarily because they lived in them, was an incredibly successful species of lion that thrived across Eurasia, Beringia, and Western North America from about 500,000 years ago till around 13,000 years ago. The cave lion, or scientifically Panthera spellie, was a keystone species in the mammoth steppe biome throughout its range being one of the many apex predators responsible for keeping down the population numbers of mammoths, bovids, deer, rhinos, and more. Thanks to their relatively close temporal proximity to the present, their fossil record is pretty good and quite well documented, with dozens to hundreds of individual specimens and a little less than a handful of adult specimens with preserved soft tissues still adhered to their bones. Pelts of the cave lion have been recovered from human sites, and there is a skull, specimen INIB001, that was used in a 2020 study to extract genomic data from. This paper found that there really were enough differences between the genomes of the cave lion and the African lion to separate the cave lion as a distinct species, Panthera spellie. You know, historically, the cave lion had been given multiple different labels and label combinations, such as a subspecies of the African lion, Panthera leo, or as a subspecies of the tiger, Panthera tigris. Less than a handful of soft tissue carrying specimens doesn't seem like a lot, and it's proportionally not a lot, but that's still pretty good for the fossil record. However, adult cave lions got quite large. Near the beginning of their reign, the largest may have been up to 9.5 feet 2.9 meters long and 1.5 meters 4.9 feet tall at the shoulder, so the chances of one of these things being frozen to death and then also being covered in snow and then ice quickly enough to avoid being thawed and eaten by scavengers or tiny decomposers are quite low. Cubs on the other hand. From 2015 to 2018, four cave lion cub ice mummies were discovered by different individuals as they were searching Yakusha, Siberia for mammoth tusks. The information they contain is vital to the complete understanding of this especially important Ice Age species. Yuan and Dina the summer of 2015 saw the discovery of a pair of squished frozen cave lion cub ice mummies by a team of mammoth tusk collectors while they were searching Edoma permafrost deposits along the Yuandina River in Yakusha, Siberia. Flooding of this river is what washed the sediment and ice away from the specimens. Upon initial discovery, the crew weren't entirely sure what they were. They could only sense their importance. So, they stashed them in a glacier to keep them from thawing until they could get them prepared and sent off to someone that could identify and describe them, which happened to be a team of paleontologists from various institutions led by nerds from the Sokka Republic Academy of Sciences. Once received, the team was able to fully photograph, describe the morphology of, and CT scan the specimens, which had been named Uyan and Dina a reverse portmanteau of the river near where they were discovered. 
Once all the difficult data collection was complete, the researchers presented their findings in a 2015 press conference before presenting at the 2016 Society of Vertebrate Paleontology meeting. Their preliminary work was able to carbon date the specimens to around 12,000 years ago, making the pair quite recent. Further work was able to piece together their last moments on Earth. With CT scans, the team was able to observe that most of the skeletons of both specimens remained intact. The skeletons, together with the general morphology and size of the cubs in comparison to the cubs of the living African lion, put the pair at around one to two weeks of age at their time of death. The skeletal evidence for their age is the fusion, or lack thereof, of their bones, the fetal anatomy of the skull, and more importantly, the size, type, and emergence of their teeth. Both Uyan and Dina had not yet had their milk or baby teeth erupt from their gums, meaning they were still sucking on the old teeth. The baby teeth of the modern lion only begin to erupt from the gums at around the one-month mark. That may have been a similar growth rate for the cave lion, but Uyan and Dina were a tad larger than the average African lion cubs of today, at the estimated one or two week age. Uyan, for example, was around 6 pounds, 2.8 kilograms, about 4 to 5 pounds more than a week old lion. Uyan was also 17 inches, 43 centimeters long, and didn't seem to have the musculature yet to use its legs for walking. The CT scans also allowed the researchers to see that Uyan's digestive tract was preserved with remnants of milk proteins, meaning it had only been a few hours since it had fed. Based on how these two cubs were preserved and the presence of crushing of the skull and separation of neck vertebrae, the paleontologists think the most likely explanation for their death was that their den collapsed and squashed them to death, covering them in sediment that then froze, drying and freezing the bodies to supreme refrigerated perfection. A second study published in 2016 recalculated the dates for the specimens and found them to be far older than initially thought. Instead of being 12,000 years old, they were more like 55,000 to 25,000 years old, which makes their seemingly perfect preservation even more impressive. That's just the power of ice, baby. This could account for their larger size, since cave lions saw a decrease in size over time towards the end of the last glacial maximum or ice age. Boris and Sparta The summer of 2017 saw another licensed mammoth tusk collector, Boris Brezhnev, stumble upon another cave lion cub ice mummy. This time, the specimen was found in permafrost sediments along the Semyulak River. This cub came to be named Boris after its discoverer. Then, in 2018, a second cub was found about 50 feet or 15 meters from Boris and was given the name Sparta. Both of these cubs come from 10 to 12 meters below the top of the Yadoma Late Pleistocene permafrost deposits of the area and were taken to Yakutsk for testing before analysis. Gotta make sure these things aren't carrying ancient dormant diseases, right? Radiocarbon dating was conducted in Japan using the cubs, the geological context in which the specimens were found, plus the mummified carcass of a female horned lark that was found in the same permafrost deposits. All of that churned out tentative dates of 43,000 years old for Boris and 27,000 years old for Sparta. So, despite being super close to one another and close in age at death, these two cubs were separated by 20,000 years. As with Uyan and Dina, Boris and Sparta were CT scanned, photographed, and measured so that researchers could analyze their insides and their outsides. These procedures resulted in a 2020 paper in Dokledi Biological Sciences and a 2021 paper in Quaternary. 
In the 2020 paper, the authors found that Boris is the largest and oldest out of all four cave lion cubs found so far, at two to three weeks of age at death. Sparta died at one to two weeks, with the authors suggesting a death due to hunger since the digestive tract was empty and small. However, the 2021 paper re-evaluated the specimens with better CT scans and found that Boris and Sparta were closer to one to two months of age at the time of death. They got this from the comparison of the internal data with that of the African lion. Boris and Sparta's baby teeth had already erupted from their gums. The CT scans for Boris and Sparta were also able to possibly reveal their sexes. Uyan and Dina weren't preserved well enough to tell, but Boris seems to contain testes and Sparta a uterus, but the researchers couldn't rely on this as the only proof. Since they can work with DNA information, they did a molecular test to see what sex chromosomes the two had. Contrary to popular belief, this is not a clear-cut answer. Boris seems to be most likely a male based on this test, and Sparta female, but this is all based on means and standard deviations. The larger size of Boris is also consistent with the sexual dimorphism already recorded in this species. All four cubs show that cave lions were whitish, tannish, yellowish, or yellowish gray in color, like you took the saturation out of the African lion. The cubs have the light whitish fur plus long darkly colored hairs sticking out of that on the top of the body. Then there is just yellowish hair on the abdomen. Their fur is thick and floofy and about the same length across the body aside from the feet where the fur is shorter with no fur on the foot pads. They had an undercoat of shorter, thicker hair to protect them from the cold. Cave lions lacked a very prominent tail brush, as in the African lion, but they still had one. It just may not have been very noticeable. The cave lion cubs had short tails, and Sparta shows a tiny bit of darker brown fur at the tip of her tail, indicating early development of their tuft tail tip. In contrast to the African lion, which doesn't develop their tail brush till five months of age, Interestingly, the authors of the 2021 paper that went more in depth on Boris and Sparta found that there were darker bits of fur around the eyes. They seemingly lacked the dark circlets or spots of African lion cubs. Cave paintings of adult cave lions all sport some form of dark marking around the eye and cheek, drawing a strong connection in growth stages between a small patch around the eye in infancy and an almost runny mascara look in the adults. The authors didn't want to speculate wildly on how Boris and Sparta died, but their internal skeletal injuries are consistent with those of Uyan and Dina. Boris and Sparta had broken skull bones, rib dislocations, and messed up spines, so that means they were killed by the environment. No evidence exists of predation, either by predators or from other cave lions, so they were likely crushed or broken by a landslide, den collapse, or just the good old fashioned fall damage. The other possibility is that they died from exposure or hunger and their bodies were crushed after death as they became buried by frozen sediments. Sad ways to go for sure, but their untimely demise is a bounty for science. Speaking of which, can we Dr. Wu ourselves into a world of cave lions stalking elk or bison in Denali National Park and Preserve? Well, there is preserved DNA information in these specimens. That is what was used by the different author teams to conduct some basic analyses on their sex chromosomes and phylogenetics. That being said, the DNA that was preserved is extremely damaged, not something that can be easily extracted, read, and reconstructed as a full genome for cloning or however that process works. Science writer David Moscato quoted Oklahoma State University ancient DNA researcher Leah Lynch in his article on Uyan and Dina. Quote, what makes these cubs exciting is the quality of the specimens, said Lynch. You have multiple tissue types to work with. 
teeth and bones, hair and muscle, end quote. Apparently, DNA was extracted from the mitochondria of the cells, which is technically the oldest cave lion remains to contain this information and was the third case of collecting this information from ice mummies as of 2017. According to Siberian Times, South Korean cloning guru Hwang Woo-suk collected samples from Uyan and Dina back in 2015 or 2016 to see how much DNA information could be obtained. However, Wang Wusuk is also extremely controversial for falsely claiming to have cloned human stem cells back in the early 2000s and was charged with embezzlement and bioethics law violations. He was back to his old schemes in the mid-2010s with investigations into collecting organic mammoth material for cloning purposes. So I think we can ignore him for now. Obviously, the next and more well-known avenue for bringing back the cave lion is going to be colossal biosciences. I used to be a bit more harsh or perhaps even reactionary towards colossal. This was born out of a lack of comprehension of the technology and advancements they've made, an outdated idea of what cloning and genetic engineering means, and jumping to conclusions. Colossal seems to be more advanced than the old-fashioned sticking sperm cell information from one cell into the egg of another. It's far more advanced than simply just having hairy elephants. I still have yet to fully understand. My world is the very long dead, the bones that are completely petrified into minerals. However, I find myself more and more drawn to the machinations of the big scary colossal biosciences, so I will get back to you as I become more learned on the subject. Colossal has gone out of their way to be transparent in their procedures and to partner up with conservationists and organizations to apply their technology to the conservation of endangered species today, which had always been a major criticism for the de-extinction of lost species. If the company is doing everything right that academics and enthusiasts had been dogging them for, then why are they still dogging on them? Perhaps it's simply PR. With all that said, Colossal's target species of woolly mammoths, thylacines, and dodos doesn't currently have room for the cave lion. This may be due to a lack of really good genetic data backed up from specimens. There are definitely a lot more mammoth mummies than cave lion mummies, However, it could be that the cave lion is actually more closely related to the still-living African lion than the woolly mammoth was to the Asian elephant, so maybe that process would be easier. I'm sure as time progresses, the cave lion will be added to their project outline. Only time will reveal more cave lions. I'm still hoping for a one in a million adult lion that fell into a big crevasse to be found one day. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.